it's time for another mailbag. bag. I've got a few things here. Now this is some stuff to fix, which has been sent to me, I know that already. So we'll look at this briefly, but I'll be doing a video on repairs of the items that are in here. Or well, at least attempted repairs, we'll see if we can do it or not. Don't forget to subscribe and that sort of stuff if you've not been here before. Click the bell icon so you get notified about new videos if you're into mailbag videos or electronic stuff. Some more back converter modules. <laughs> they just keep on coming. This is a different type to what I had before. So I think these are fixed ones. Let's have a look what's on the back. 9 volt. Here we go. 9 volt buck converters. So I also use selectable voltages depending on what resistor values they set on the front here. So this is different to what I had before which is adjustable. These are fixed values. A general rule with these things is the more capacitors they have on them, the better the quality is. Filtering is really important on back converters and anything like switch mode supplies and sort of stuff. Very important. You know, stop noise coming through the power supply and that sort of stuff. The cheaper ones have very few capacitors on them. I only have you know, a few, maybe two or three. A good guide is the more capacitors are on there, the better the filtering is on them. And they're trying to actually keep the noise out. So if you see back converters online and you've got options about which ones you get, get the one which got the most capacitors on it. Leave the links for these items down below, so don't forget to check those out. I've got various affiliate links here, I've got even got Amazon ones that is an Amazon store. If you want to buy things through Amazon instead of through AliExpress or Banggood. Double bagged, because everyone likes plastic, right? So this is like a double spanner, well double ratchet, double ended ratchet. So this end here is like a standard sized, was that quarter inch or something, ratchet head. So it'll fit in nice those little mini sockets you can get. It's got a little ejection thing here which collapses the ball bearing or the ball catch on there. Direction change. Fairly small increments on there, that's pretty good. Pretty small steps on there which is good. And this end here is a standard hexagonal which fits things like screwdriver bits. That will go in there. So you've got a really small ratcheting screwdriver piece right angled. So you've got a really tight space to get into, you can't get a screwdriver in there. You can get this in and you could obviously press against the side of it, you could do it this way. Very handy, it means you don't need much movement either. I got one, I was thinking it'd be really handy, because the amount of times I've wished I had something really small to get into a little spot, the amount of times I've had to use like a, 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 a screwdriver bit and a pair of pliers to try and undo something, so the amount of times I've wished I had this. There'll be links for this down below, check it out. How good it is as far as quality, no idea. Won't know to actually go and use it and put some stress on it and see if it shears all the teeth off. I mean, who knows? But uh, it certainly looks the part. It feels all right. I don't remember what the price was on these now. It's like sort of tall. It's good to have in your arsenal of equipment. You know, when you're trying to work on bits of gear, you never quite know what you're going to need. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon, help support the channel, then check out the links down below in the description. Click on the Show More tab. And it will expand it and show the like the affiliate links stuff like that as well in the description for the video and all the shortcuts to the items, obviously, if you don't know that. And links to Patreon if you want to help support the channel, help me to buy items from our bag, that sort of stuff. So this is a used DC SD adapter. This is used for iPhones. So we've got a lightning connector here. So we look at the quality of the connections. A little bit dirty, but kind of looks alright, I suppose. This is used for putting like iPhones in DFU mode and doing firmware updates and stuff like that on them. Hacking into them a little bit and getting the serial numbers off them and stuff like that. So you can get different ones. This is a used one. Um, with the idea being that it's proven and cheaper. I don't care too much if it's used as long as it works. Yeah, so you need software to go with this stuff like that. But I'm getting a few different bits to work on iPhones because I've decided I'm going to start doing some iPhone repair stuff. I'm not going to do much, just a little bit here and there. As the opportunities arise and can pick them up cheap enough, then I'll, I'll pick them up. But uh, otherwise, I'm not going to worry about too much. I guess it's another tool to play with, isn't it? Face mask. <laughs> face mask, yes. I've, I've bought a face mask. I've actually been off work for the three weeks now because of the alert levels. And Auckland is in level three, which is where my work is. I live outside of Auckland. I'm in level two zone. Now level 2 is pretty much unrestricted, you know, it's just like no gatherings and social distancing and stuff like that, you know, all the, all the common sense stuff to make sure you stay safe. Level 3 is a lot of workplaces shut down but essential services or more important services are working still. Now my business is still working. Problem is, they've put a border up between level 2 and level 3 in the Auckland region, so you can't get into Auckland unless you have um, an exemption. You work for certain industries or you have an exemption. Now my company is quite an important company, 
and they've applied for an exemption because they, although the company is not listed as an essential service, it kind of is important. I'm waffling a bit here, aren't I? Anyway, we'll get. I'll get to the point. Honest, I promise you, I will. Because I won't be a rant, a bit really. Yeah, I think you're right, a rant. It's just mentioned in here. It's a rant. The exemption process. You have to apply for exemptions to get across the border, and that takes a while. My company applied for it eight days ago. Nine days ago. Nine days ago, they've applied for it. Still haven't heard yet. No response. Now, it's supposed to be like a two-day turnaround. So, why has it taken nine days so far and still not heard back yet? My wife, who also works for an essential service, although is outside the criteria of an essential service, believe it or not, it's a bit weird, also cannot go across the border. She's in the same boat. Her employer applied for it ten days ago. And... He still hasn't heard either. So, two different companies both got in on the very first or second day of the exemptions application process, haven't had a response back. Not good enough from the government. You know, so there's people which can't go to work, just not us. There's thousands of people which are affected by this, and the government is doing nothing to actually um, deal with that. You know, there's no wage subsidies because the wage subsidy only comes in if the company's shut down. The company's running, it's making money. So, it's not losing a lot of money. It's just cost them a little bit more. And, you know, my company for a while, it, it kind of works around the problem now, but that it's costing them probably $1,000 a day for me not to be there. Um, I'm sure they really appreciated the government stopped me from going to work. And there's no money from the government to help support me, you know, to pay my wages. There's, they've also got that loss too. So, you know. Anyway. So when I do go back to work, I'm going to need one of these. I'm still ranting about that. The I've emailed, well, I'm messaged on a whole bunch of reporters on on um, Twitter. I've, I've messaged the Prime Minister, um, leader of the opposition, some other politicians. I've messaged all these people. I've also messaged the official COVID sites and um, the Facebook pages and all that. Nothing's been dealt with, and I'm not the only person this affects. You know. It's been an oversight of the government to think that, oh, the, you know, this, this exemption process is okay, people can apply. Well, it's great if it can get done in a couple of days. I think a couple of days is reasonable to expect that. But to take over a week so far, you know, this is people's livelihoods and their, and their incomes and, you know, the ability to survive and get money. Can't even go shopping. Can't even go to the supermarket or anything. Anyway. These are some 1610A3. Here you go, 1610A3, 10 pieces. So these are the TriStar ICs from iPhone 6S and probably some other devices as well. So again, like I said, I'm getting my iPhone bits and pieces together and I'm going to try and do some repairs. This is a potential, well, common failure point where people use knockoff chargers, stuff like that, and the quality of the charger is really, really bad. You can get, you know, aftermarket chargers, which are fine, but some of them I really wouldn't recommend putting on your phone. And when you do that, you can blow your TriStar IC up. Or, or it could be some other fault, you know, battery failure or something that could possibly do it too. I've got an iPhone here, which I've got to repair yet. This one here, which has a battery drain issue, and it could be a dry star. I don't know, I haven't actually investigated it yet. But, dry star I see. Big links for these. Right. What is this? Oh yes, okay. So this is an LM741CH. There's two of them in there. See them in the pack. I'm not going to open the packets up, but there's these metal can type. Push the lighting is causing some hindrances here. Trying to see into the packet. There you go. You can see this one slightly better, I suppose. There you go. Um, metal can. Now these are used parts, new old stock apparently, and yet they do look old. But um, there's a little bit of corrosion stuff on them. A little bit of pitting. The first lot I purchased disappeared. They didn't arrive, so I contacted the seller. This is from eBay, so there might be a link for these. And he resent them, so he sent some more. So very good on the seller for doing that, supporting the whole process and actually sending me replacements for the ones which disappeared. So these are the replacement ones because I checked the date on the packaging on the postal, and this is the replacements, not the originals. So, oh well, good on him for sending these. I should mention them actually. Does he have his name on there? It's some Israel chip leader. Yeah, chip leader is called on uh, on eBay. Because of the fact he backed up his service and actually sent replacements, so I'm going to give him a plug. Because that's the right thing to do. So I've still got that big package yet of the things which I need to fix. Let's, oops, let's try and get into here. 
Right. I find success cases. Three of those. Some seals. These are the seals that go around the screen. Help seal the screens up. Make them waterproof again. Or at least kind of water resistant, I should say. Let's see those. We've got some screen protectors. Toolkit. A few of them. A few toolkits. And naturally, because of that, we're going to have some screens. So I've used this supplier before, a couple of times now, for iPhone screens, and the quality has been really good. So I've decided to stock up on screens, so I'm going to be doing this iPhone repair stuff. and. One of the common things you need is a screen. That's like incredibly common. So I've got two black, two white. And I think these were for the 6S. These are 6S screens. Because that's what I'm working on doing. These ones actually have things like the bits already in the screen. So you can see it's already got the plastic inserts in there. All right, that sort of thing it makes it a lot easier. So just here and here, they're already in place. So you got to do is remove that sticker piece there, put the end piece in, bolt the top assembly on with the camera and everything, and you're done. Obviously, you still got to put the um, back plate on this and that sort of thing. But so there will be links for these things down below because this is a good supplier. I'm, I've been very happy with them. So recommended. The more I suppose the more they sell, the uh, more likely I'll be around in the future. I want some more myself. So the big box, as you can see, it's had a hard time. It's a bit munted. So hopefully what is inside is okay because they've made a bit of a mess of the box. Look at the state of it. Oh, my very nice getting bunged in. Right, there's a note. Let me check. It's an Acatherm unit. And then there's another Acatherm unit. And then there's another unit, which is probably Acatherm too. Apparently they're all broken. I don't know what they've been doing, but yeah, they've um, they've all had faults. I don't know whether they've had them for a little while or whether it's, they're doing a particular job and they're getting a lot of use and they're failing or or what. But um, let's this one. This one's a different format. I haven't seen this one before. I'll get out the bag. Okay. When turned on, comes up with error one. Next time shows in error two. Okay, I don't know what those are. I guess I have to try and figure that out. I mean, there's no guarantees I can fix any of these things. I mean, I'm not an expert on these waters. I'm just having a play around with them and see if I can fix any basic faults. We've got some test leads here. I've done a fitting, but at least I do know the resistances I'm supposed to be seeing. And I now have my test resistor here too, so I can actually put a load onto it and actually do a, a weld cycle onto my test resistor. So I can actually do those, those kinds of tests now. Now that's all arrived. I'll do a repair video on all these things. Well, a repair attempt video at least. This is very similar to the first one, which I, well, one was it the second unit I repaired. Same style. Um, light goes on, but not registering. Okay, probably a, another test lead problem. I fixed before in the other unit, exactly the same style with these things. These connectors were quite loose on the actual fitting. Fortunately, I don't have the fitting here. At least I put notes on saying what the issue is with them. Makes my job a little bit easier. Light goes on, but not registering, same issue. Apparently, this was calibrated earlier this year. This was done this year. It's not even that old. So these are the same style as the CB6160. That's a CB160. This one is a HST S160. I'm not familiar with that one at all. It's a different brand. These ones I've worked on before. So I've got a little bit of familiarity with these ones at least. So yeah. There'll be videos on these things. Right now I've got to clean up the mess and start fixing these because they're waiting for them apparently. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon, make sure you go and check out the links down below. If you want to buy any items that are featured in the mailbag or anything else which you haven't featured in the mailbag, use the affiliate links down below. Go to those sites like Banggood, AliExpress or, or Amazon. Use those links and it helps to sub, uh, support my channel because I get commissions from the items that are purchased through those links. So, thank you much and I'll catch you later. I've got some work to do.